Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for July 1st of 2022. So we will begin. Um, let's just go ahead and go into the heart space. Take our three breaths that we usually do. So if you're doing this for the first time, it's a very simple thing we call the Trinity breath. It's simply visualizing within your physical heart is your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth, just closing your eyes, taking in that deep breath of that love and healing energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Just allowing that beautiful connection of that supporting energy of the earth. She supports in more than just grounding. She helps in the release of the things that no longer serve when we fully connect heart to heart with the earth. Next, we connect with source, soul, creator, God, you as a central sun in creation. However you see and say this higher power, which is you, breathing in that light, that support, that wisdom into the heart. The third breath is just simply breathing in that energy of earth, that energy of creation, and allowing them to flow to each other through you. So you become what the shaman call the hollow bone. You're just simply a conduit for that flow of energy from creation, you, to the earth and back. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning from Australia and Atlanta and Maine, North Carolina coast. Thank you all for being here today. And all, as always, uh, if you are attending live, please do drop your questions in the questions tab. If you are watching after the fact or on YouTube, perhaps, um, you are welcome to join us live. Just sign up at twistedsage.com for the newsletter and we'll let you know when we start. And hey there from British Columbia and Miami, Florida. And yes, thank you all for being here today. And if you are here live, please do jump on and uh, share chats with everybody here. And otherwise, we'll go ahead and start with our questions. Um, we'll begin with a question from uh, an email. And then we'll move into any questions you guys may have here. All right. So our first question is from Kaz. When wearing the HECA clasps on your right arm, does this share the energy with other people? When wearing a heck clasp on your left arm, does this just give the wearer energy? So with the tensor tools, when you have any ring anywhere in your field, it does not matter um, because our, our field extends out quite a ways. I mean, our heart is an electromagnetic field, a electromagnetic generator. That field is, goes out about three feet in all directions. So basically, as long as a tensor ring is within your field, within just a few inches of your body, your physical, or directly onto your physical, that energy is working throughout the whole, the whole. Now, that can be any size of ring, a pendant, a bracelet, a ring that you're standing in, one that's in your pocket. They're all going to cover your entire field. Now, when you go to wear a ring or another tensor tool, such as a generator bracelet, and you wear that near a, your wrist, let's say that you have carpal tunnel or um, uh, something going on with your wrist, you would wear that tool close to, in close proximity to the area that you're really working on. Again, this will cover your entire body and it'll still be working on your big toe. But when you have it right here within close proximity of the area that you're working on, if you're working on your body, then that's what it's working for. Um, so wearing the tools on a specific area can work more for that specific area. Now, going back to the question about running energy, if you put a tool on your right arm or your left arm or one of your meridians on your fingers, we get that question a lot, putting rings on a specific meridian. 
Now, when you equip yourself with those rings and it is your intention that you want to be able to flow the energy to a person and you put that on, that's what's going to happen. So basically, it does not matter the left and right, which meridian you put it on, anything like that, unless that is your intention to do the work that way. So let's go back to the question here. Um, when wearing the Heka clasp on your right arm, does this share the energy with other people? Because most of us will send energy out our right arm, you know, our right hands, those who, who work with energy. Usually you receive on the left and you send on your right. That's not written in stone. That's just kind of a, a generalization for, for people. Um, so if you wear that clasp on your right arm, you're sending energy, then yes, especially if your attention is there that your attention and intention on with 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 this tool that you are running energy along with the energetics of the tools so when you run energy out your hand you are bringing in that divine light that light of the earth that's coming through the heart through the meridian and out your arm that's the way that people who do hands-on healing reiki such they run energy from the heart, your connection. So it's an infinite amount of energy flow that you run and it runs through the meridian. So when you're running energy with your hand, and this is the same with a wand, when you're holding a wand, you're also bringing through the energy from the heart through the meridian and out the wand. So whether you're using a wand or your hand, you're running that energy. Now, if you do have a bracelet, a heck of class on the arm that you're running energy, then yes, especially if it, it does not have to be a hard intention or your attention onto that as you're running energy. Simply when you have put the bracelet on, it is your soft intention. It's your intention right there that you are going to be amplifying that energy and that you're going to be harmonizing these energies as you are running them. You don't have to put it into words. Your soul knows your intention. So that's the beautiful thing about soft intentions is your soul always knows your intention. So if your intention is to amplify the energy you're running when you put that bracelet on, that's exactly what it's going to do. And you don't have to concentrate and focus. Your intention is set. And then you go. So running energy, yes, it's a great thing to add the tools when you're running energy because you can bring a lot more through with the tools too um, by working with those fields. So let's see. All right. We haven't finished up the question yet here. All right. So then, um, yeah, so that's the same as if you are receiving energy, you know, um, with your left hand and you're wearing a bracelet, whatever your intentions are or belief structures. So that's it too, is a lot of people have the belief structures about the meridians and that is kind of where their focus is. So when they get a finger ring, they're working with a specific meridian, but that is only because of their intention and with, with working with those tools. Otherwise somebody else can slip one on and it might not do anything with meridians. Um, so it, it really is based on a person's intention on how it affects the energy that they run or that flows within them. And again, if you just bring the tool into your field, it's working throughout your entire field without having to have any intentions with that. Um, so let's see, the second part of the question here, when providing healing energy to others, is it good to have a three inch golden fire ring and a three inch wisdom ring on both arms? So, you know, I really love the wisdom tools. To me, the wisdom tools, whether you are using a wisdom ring on your arm or the new energy, because that also contains that energy of the wisdom. When you have those on your hand and you're running energy, you are actually hold, helping to hold a field. And this field is allowing the person to basically amass more of their light more of their consciousness that's what this wisdom field is all about is bringing in more of your soul's light your consciousness your wisdom 
And what these wisdom tools are doing is that they are going through and they're, they're acting like a catalyst. They are taking all of the old experience, the traumas, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. It is taking and allowing your light to distill the light and information from those experiences. Then you bring it in as wisdom, light, soul's light, consciousness. And then you just keep amassing, um, you know, and that's, so if you're using, um, you know, if you're using the rings for doing healing work, I really do suggest the wisdom tools because they are working so much more with the soul and they're holding space, allowing the soul to do more of the work that is beyond our comprehension, visualization, understanding, which is part of the new paradigm, which is that you know, surrender, most people don't like the word surrender, but it's, it's, it's an allowing, it's a surrender to the soul. It's not that you're just, um, you know, giving yourself up to whatever waves of creation. The surrender is comes after you are in alignment and you're trusting your light and you're connected. That's when the surrender takes place. That's when the magic and the miracle start to take place. And that is the new paradigm. Okay, so I think we're done with questions there. Checking back in here with chat. Hey, Samson. <laughs> hey, Lee, good to see you. Hey, David. Oh, man, and we got people from all over here. And thank you all again for being here live and in support. All right. Hmm. Hey, Samson. So you're headed to Estes, huh? Wow. We just got back from Estes yesterday. As a matter of fact, I took my sister, Brenda, my sister, Billy, our business manager, and our mom and my daughter. And we just went for a three-day drive down to Colorado to the um, Rocky Mountain National Park and Estes and all of that, um, you know, just to kind of see everything there. So it was, it was a great Great fun experience. So it's good to see Samson that you're going there to do some work with the water as well. Yep, we threw in a lot of headicas. All right, so we're and we'll see what we got going on. Okay, seems like we're having some issues here. One moment. Right. Just making sure. Um, is my audio still working, everybody? Let's see. Okay, audio is good. Thank you. All right. So here we go. We will get over here to the questions. Okay. Sorry, just had some technical difficulties here. Okay. So we'll start over here with questions. Um, this one's from Anna. I've received yesterday the new energy prototype. Have no idea what to do with it. Suggestions. So any of the new energy tools, it's basically um, they're space holders. They're space holders for more of your consciousness, your light, to come in and distill the light and information from all that you are and bring that in more as wisdom, light, consciousness. So basically with these new energy tools, as well as like the alchemist and the wisdom, um, it's not that you really have to do a lot with these tools. Again, it goes back to this whole new paradigm of allowing. Um, basically when you are in these fields, um, you begin to amass more of your light and your consciousness. They, they, these help to create like a magnet within you, a magnet of your light. Um, and so actually, if you go back to the December 5th, 50 question Friday on YouTube, you'll be able to find it there. We did a meditation back in December, which was the zero point of the soul. 
And that is the basics of what these tools are doing for the human on this level right here in the physical in the here now moment. It is really a beautiful process. Um, so yeah, I, I'd certainly suggest to, you know, just walk through that guided meditation from December 5th and you can go, you don't have to watch the whole 50 questions Friday. Um, it's all time stamped within there on YouTube and you can find that meditation. So basically, once you go through the meditation, that will basically show you, um, you know, you'll, you'll understand and probably begin to feel what these new energy tools are doing. Again, this new energy only came out in April 5th of this year, 2022. Um, but this zero point, which is the zero point of the soul that we did back in December 5th is, is, is basically the that starting space, uh, the starting place that I would suggest, because that is all about bringing our light and our wisdom. And that's really what this new energy is about, is it about holding those fields for all of that to occur, for these greatest shifts that we came here for. You know, everything's happening automatically. The, the universe is holding that space. Our souls are holding the space the tools that we create and the spaces that we hold are simply they're they're just another flow there i mean all rivers are flowing to the same space we're just trying to make things come with a lot more grace and ease but we're all going to get there but it's just the journey and and i'd rather have a lot more grace and ease <laughs> so that's really what this is all about is about providing that grace and ease. So, yeah, that's what I would suggest doing with it is going through the meditation. Otherwise, keeping it on your body. Vina, uh, thinking of getting a harmony ring, is there a difference between the eight inch and the four inch? And so basically with, with all the tools that we create, all the different sized rings, all rings will have the same power and potency. So a one inch harmony ring is the same energy field as a 27 inch harmony ring you know the field is just a lot bigger because a ring creates a column of light so like the larger rings you can put it clear around you the smaller rings you can carry it on your person and it's still going to be affecting your entire field now with the harmony rings um oh wait sorry i'll take one more step back another difference in the rings is the gauge so the thickness of the ring so a thicker ring usually people can feel it more tangibly on the physical the energetics is going to be the same whether it is a thick ring or a thin gauge copper ring the energetics will still be the same but it the heavier gauge is felt more on the physical so that would be what i would say the difference is between the two sizes um, diane the 22 inch new energy ring doesn't have a description is it also a wisdom ring ah uh, yes <sighs> yeah i really need to get some descriptions but the thing with this new energy is is that um it's not fully and completely anchored in um I kind of gave the analogy the other week of this new energy every time we create one of these new tools. Um, so when we see this, when we see in this new energy, when it first came in, I believe it was that beginning of April, um, you know, it's almost like I could see it, this field is like a giant egg, let's say. And every time that we've brought in one of these new energy rings, it's like we bring in a portion, a snapshot of this portion of the egg or this portion, or this portion. The other day I used the analogy of the blind men describing the elephant, and one blind man would describe the trunk, and the tail, and the ear, and the belly, and everything just a little bit differently. But yet they didn't all have the whole elephant. And so what I've been telling people is, is that these different tools in the new energy that we've been bringing in is like a snapshot. Maybe here's the tail of the elephant, the trunk, the ear, the foot and so we have not been able to bring through the full elephant the whole egg within this new energy so we've been bringing in portions of it now when we are ready 
when the world is ready, we will bring in the whole elephant, the whole egg, it'll show up. So, but don't worry because any of the tools that you buy in the new energy will be completely updated with the whole elephant once it all comes in. But for now, they are each a snapshot of what that hole is. But it, like I say, as soon as the whole thing comes through, it will go into any of the new energy tools that you have already. So it won't make anything obsolete. They're going to get more phenomenal. Now, we've had a lot of great feedback so far on these new energy tools on these fields. Um, they're pretty phenomenal, even though they're only bits and pieces of this greater field. Um, so the 22 inch new energy ring, um, basically you can treat it as a wisdom ring because it does contain that energetics of the wisdom. It was built off of the wisdom field. Now then this new energy is such a huge step even. So the wisdom, oh my goodness, huge step. And I cannot believe what the wisdom does. It is mind blowing. This new energy is another giant step. The wisdom was a giant step. This is another giant step, but it does contain the wisdom. What this new energy is, the basics of it, is that it is a more tangible connection with the earth. So when we breathe in that light of the earth and we are connecting heart to heart, when you're using these tools and you're connecting heart to heart with the earth and you're using these new energy fields, it is such a more tangible connection. And then when you are connecting with you, you are bringing in a more tangible aspect of you, which we see as this giant central sun in creation, which is you and you are creation as well. And that is what we are tapping into. What each of you are tapping into through these fields and are tapping into anyway but these fields just bring it through quicker with more grace and ease. So the 22 inch um, new energy ring without the description, um, we will have a better description when we bring in the full elephant, but for now, boy, just using it for that grounding connecting is huge. Um, Elena, I am new to tensor products would like to find out what is the best pendant for an autistic child with sensory processing issues emf protection required certainly so any of the pendants any of the tensor tools are going to provide that emf protection uh, they will transform all electromagnetic fields as they come into your field so you never so you will no longer have those discordant emfs when you are within the field of the tools now then for an for an autistic child with the sensory, um, usually, gosh, I would suggest two different things. And one is the tensor field generator. You know, you can have any of the tensor field generators, the spherical form in the home, because basically what the tensor field generators do is they're going to create a, a, a space. So they're going to work for the environment on clearing and harmonizing all these discordant energies that those who are very sensitive to energies are, you know, that's, that's where they're being distracted from. And so we harmonize that entire environmental field with a tensor field generator. Um, you know, and you could go with anywhere from the golden fire generators, um, you know, even a harmony generator uh, to the divine I am, or these or the ones in the new energy um the tensor field generator bracelet has um which would probably be the most affordable out of all the generators i believe either that or the two and a half inch golden fire generator um but the generator bracelets in the new energy is another one that i would suggest um which is what this one is this is the large size and then we have a smaller size but a tensor field generator and then as far as a pendant goes, I would suggest um, one of the coil pendants, such as um, either a coil pendant or a wand pendant. 
that would be the quantum heart coil pendant. It is a very small, lightweight pendant, and it produces a beautiful field of transformation right around you so that as the things come in, it is harmonized within your field. Um, either that or else the, the wisdom wand pendants, which are which look very similar to the quantum heart coil and they act very similar to they're of the same energy the wand um the wand pendant is just a little bit more open and flowing um there's really no wrong choice when you're choosing the tools um either the wand pendant or the quantum heart coil are the ones that I would suggest to choose from. Um, even the golden fire coil would be great too. But um, one of those coil pendants and a generator, if you were just gonna get one, um, you know, maybe the pendant. Um, so anyway, we're glad that you found the tools here. And um, yeah, if you're, if you're like you, are still welcome to chat with everybody here. And if you have more questions and would like some follow-up answers on any of these things, you guys are still more than welcome to email me too. Uh, Susanna, I just received the new energy 24 inch practitioner ring. Love it. I, I felt the power. I want to carry it with me everywhere, but if I want to leave it somewhere in the house, where's the best place? So gosh, I know I, I love my 24 inch ring too. I actually carry mine on my motorcycle. I like it that much. So when I go cross country, I drape it around this way or else I sit it clear around me and set it on my lap. Love that ring. Um, so if you're not actively using it, where's the best place to leave it? Um, you know, I would leave it someplace where you wish to charge your your food, your supplement, um, put it on your hot water heater, put it on your refrigerator, um, you know, in your cupboard, uh, the places that you, you know, while you're gone during the day, you can leave whatever charging within that ring, food, water, supplements, crystals. So maybe one day you leave it over your jewelry box. So you clean and clear all of your jewelry throughout the day. Or you, you know, like I say, hot water heater is a great one. Um, uh, let's see. Most of us put them on our hot water heaters too, our, our rings and such, just to keep down the, um, because we have such hard water here. It allows that um, dissipation of the solids more. So you, you, you don't blow up your hot, your hot water heaters. The elements don't get so fried. Um, Let's see. So basically, yeah, just anywhere that you wish to work with um, that field for the day, you know. So that's what I would suggest, unless maybe you create like, you know, some kind of a altar, let's say, that you have a bunch of crystals and other energy tools and maybe essential oils and whatever. And you can just build that and intend that that's just broadcasting all day. You can do that as well. Um, so just some thoughts there for, for the ring while you're not in use. Uh, Tara, I take photographs and make canvas prints of beings I see in the sky. I feel like their energy comes through the prints. Do you think I need the alchemist tab with the new energy on my phone or computer for the energy to come through the canvas prints? Or is this already happening? Well, I tell you, I don't know. It really feels like when you do add the ring to it, yeah, yeah, I, I, I would do it. Um, I feel like putting that alchemist tab or the wisdom ring um, can help to bring through that energy in the prints too. But, you know, that's just kind of what I felt as I was reading your question. Um, you know, and that may be just because you need it for now until you are fully confident and you can hold that field and that intention and you basically can do it yourself without having to have the tools um so i feel you can do it without the tools the tools are space holders and training wheels to help us realize the things that we can do and they're also attunement devices because a lot of these energies we don't know until we are attuned, we brought them into our awareness. So yeah, I 
feel you can do this without the tools, the tools are there and available. Um, all right. So we jump back over here to chat. Hmm, do magnets affect the energies of the tools? Um, yeah, there is some kind of a play that happens between tensor fields and magnets. We did a biofeedback study where we were able to, um, we found somebody who had a video processing biofeedback machine, GDD photo imaging, and they were able to video a magnet, a refrigerator magnet, and you could see the magnetic lines coming off the magnet. And then we were able to do a tensor ring and you could see that field flowing within the ring. Then we put the magnet inside the ring and we could see where the magnetic fields from the magnet just disappeared. But then every once in a while, there was like this little arc that would, that magnetic field would arc over onto the copper, which is strange, unexplainable. There is something that occurs with magnetic fields and the tensor fields. And we really don't know what that is. They do synergize, amplify each other, um, you know, because, and then that kind of leads us into electromagnetic fields, EMFs. Everybody's like, oh, these EMFs are killing me. Oh, EMFs are bad. No, everything in the physical universe is electromagnetic. Everything, molecules, planets, everything is electromagnetic in this physical universe. So the tensor fields are basically harmonizing discordant electromagnetic fields. So let's say your man-made electrical device, instead of putting out this smooth flowing energy, it's like, you know, it's just all chaotic and discombobulated and it's not a harmonious field. And then you bring that into our smooth flowing electromagnetic field. And if you are not standing fully in your field and in your power, then this discordant electromagnetic field is going to come in and you're just going to entrain to it. And then you're going to be all discombobulated. So um, <laughs> what was the point of the story? Oh, God, I don't even know. Oh, yeah. Electromagnetic fields and tensor rings. So basically, um, the tensor rings are just going to harmonize the electromagnetic field. But beyond how magnets and rings work together, we do not know. Alicia, how would the how would the new energy 24 inch practitioner ring affect the ascension pyramid if I leave it there when I'm not using elsewhere? Yes, I tell you what, this the 24 inch um, new energy ring on the ascension pyramids is phenomenal. Um, you know, the pyramids do receive the updates. So the pyramids receive the updates of the new energy anyway, but they're just kind of like in the container They're They're part of the field that's accessible within there. But when you put that ring over the pyramid, it does seem to broadcast it, it, it shifts. It does shift it a lot. So, um, yeah, if you're not home, I would totally put that 24 inch ring over the pyramid and just let it broadcast. Uh, Diane, when someone gets a gift card, how do they receive the credit? Um, so what we do with the gift cards, if you purchase a gift card, then you either can, we can either send out a printed piece of paper that just simply has the coupon code on it, or you can just simply get the electronic coupon code. And then you get that coupon code to the person. They make their purchase. They put in the coupon code for that gift card at uh, during the checkout. So if they have a, you know, if they have a hundred dollar gift card, they only use $50 of it. Basically they'll um, either you will send them that electronic code or else you can print out that paper and mail them or give them that piece of paper that has the code on it. And simply they go to their shopping cart, they enter the code during checkout. And if they have not used that, then they still have that credit is still there. So if they have, you know, buy them a thousand dollars worth of gift cards, they, that credit will stay and it's indefinite for as, as long as we're here, which is probably indefinitely. So, um, it, it it's a fairly simple process. Uh, Susanna, 
I want to give my sister my old copper wisdom wand. I know the wand is self-cleaned. It would not transfer my stuff to her, right? No, nope, it will not transfer. Um, so basically, you know, with the wisdom wands or any of the tools, um, there that that field's always working for us. But when we hand it over, it's going to work um, differently for every person, and it will work exactly how that person needs it. And it's not going to carry any residual of you on the tools. So thank you for sharing them with others, for sure. All right. So it looks like we may be complete there. Um, hmm. Well, I could tell a couple stories of things that have happened in the past two weeks. But um, the stories that I tell are basically um, energy work, things that we do and things that we see, and they're a little off the wall and crazy. So if you're not into the real mm, wild metaphysical stuff, you know, you might want to just tune out and ignore this part because we'll just talk about some crazy stories that happened in the past couple of weeks. Um, so here we go. And I'll... Just consider that we're probably done with questions and I'll tell a couple of quick stories. So basically, um, <laughs> story time. Thanks, guys. Uh, let's see. I had an entity cleared. Holy smokes. So, you know, I've, I've had a couple of entities. When I first started doing the work here about 10 years, 10, 12 years ago, um, I had a couple of entities that popped up. They had been with me for many lifetimes. It's a soul contract. They walked with me, one for like 76 lifetimes, another like 140, something like that. Um, and basically, it's it's a con, it's it's an agreement that your soul has with another soul that you both kind of inhabit the same space in the here and now. So, um, this other entity that just it just started surfacing, um, you know, I told you guys a story a while back when we were working with soul aspects. I had an aspect that kept coming in and showing me projecting its fears and traumas on me so that every time I sat on my motorcycle, I would see myself rolling across the highway and my daughter mourning my death. And finally, I was just fed up with that. I was like, man, is that my ego? I know that's me. And I found that it was the soul aspect. So we integrated that aspect of me and then I no longer had that issue. But here in the past couple of weeks, it was really weird because that fear stuff was coming up again. I mean, I was having fear quite often. I was like, what? Wait, no, that's not mine. But I could never find it and I could never clear it. Um, finally, friend of the other day, found it. It was an entity that was ready to surface. It has been with me for who knows how long, a long time. But it has always remained, you know, kind of at the back but it was surfacing because it was showing me all of those fears. It was projecting them into my creation. Um, so it's cleared, it's gone. Um, went through a little slight mourning process with that because it had been with me for who knows how long. Um, so that was one interesting thing. Um, you know, and, and Brenda's partner too, uh, her path partner, she found an entity with her too. And we were like, man, we thought we were clear of all this stuff, but it's just, it's just surfacing. It's just more shedding way of all the older things. So I believe we're actually going to do an entity clearing uh, webinar here sometime. And basically, I will just basically walk you guys all through the pyramids because the Bosnian pyramid is the energy that we use um, on doing that release work. So we'll do a webinar here sometime of of this entity clearing and I'll walk you through this process and hold that space um, for any of you who, who feel like you would like to try that. Okay, another story. Well, we're driving through, um, on our way down to the Rocky Mountains, I took everybody through to a picnic in Guernsey, Wyoming. There's this great big lake and there's military bases there and tank training grounds and weird stuff, but it's kind of a wild energy. So anyway, went to this lake and um, we stopped and we were taking pictures and we all got back in the car because of Brenda and she was doing some clearing work and stuff and she was getting nailed hard 
Um, she was being constricted, hurt in the heart, you know, just, it was bad. And all we, all I could find was, is that we stepped into a space physically that we had something was going on. Um, so we got to just get down the road because we couldn't find it. We couldn't clear it. So we went down the road. Um, and then it cleared and we just kept, you know, she kept working at the residual that was with her there until that night. Um, what we realized was is that basically she had uh this this energy that came up was a dragon um and this dragon was a guardian now kind of like when we talked about how years ago we went through and we cleared all the church grids and the sonic grids and all of that and in the state capital grids and in each one of there each one of those specific physical places there was a dragon held against its free will because the dragons are the ones who create the, the grid lines. And so basically this dragon was in contract, a soul level contract held there against his will. And he was the guardian for this space. Once he cleared this space underneath of this giant lake, it was this big, huge, um, clean, pristine, crystalline space under the water, under the river, under the lake. To me, it felt like a hangar. Um, it was empty and clear. So on the third day of our trip, we came back through on the way home and we stopped there. And yeah, there was, there was a ship. Um, and it was there in that space. And there was a tall guy and a shorter guy. And they kind of had oval shaped heads and, they were very bluish, whitish, translucent, and they had like suits on. They look kind of like Arcturians, I guess. And they were there just to give thanks because basically uh, that was their space and it always had been their space. But then there was that guardian that was placed there maliciously with ill intent to prevent them from utilizing that space. So now that guardian is gone they're back, they're utilizing the space, they feel good. They're of a higher consciousness, heart-based. Um, there's been a lot of hmm, people who have shared their stuff. And when I look at it, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of very large ships with people's stories that they share that I can see. And so there's been some pretty interesting things happening in the past couple of weeks that, um, I don't know, you could say the veils are thinning that we're able to, that, that things are coming closer. So if you are in this frequency and vibration in, and something else is in this frequency and vibration, you usually can't see it. That's our third eye. That's, that's where we train. That's where we entrain to that frequency to be able to see, feel, communicate, work with things in that frequency instead of being here but it's almost like these frequencies are coming closer and closer together and then when they do then they are within our physical reality there is so much not within our physical reality that is there so talk about you know, all these other dimensions, all these other things, they're all right here. It's not like they exist in way far out other places and spaces. They're all right here. Anyway, interesting stories. Um, <laughs> going back over here to questions. All right. So yeah, that was the stories. I know I'm feeling a lot better. Um, starting to come out of things, starting to come out of that giant ship. Uh, Brenda, I just received the silver halo and it's blowing my mind. The blue light just poured into me and cleared my head. My husband has COVID and so far I'm okay. Every time I start feeling off, I put it on my head or over my face at night and I feel clear. Just amazing. Beautiful. Thank you for that feedback, Brenda. Yeah, I wear my silver halo a lot. I carry it on the dash of my car and I have one inside of my helmet for my bike. I love that silver halo. Um, and I am very happy to hear that, you know, 
you are having tangible effects with that halo. Um, and yeah, that's in that, that new energy as well. So thank you for sharing that. So, all right. Yeah. Don't know what else to say besides, oh my goodness, things are, things are moving and shifting and oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Even though things may not seem beautiful, let's take the Supreme Court of the United States, for example. Yay, holy shakeups, man. You know, that's what we need, is we need, is we need to clear, 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 clear all of this, all of this energy that has hid all of the stuff that has always been there. And everything is becoming visible. Everything's becoming visible. Things are no longer able to hide. And that is beautiful. And so that's the stuff that's coming up. And I know it sucks. And I know it's all politics and religion and all this silly crap that is just all part of the illusion. But anyway, it's exciting. And thank you all for being here. Um, I was going to see if there was anything else to mention. Um, today is the last day of our tool of the week sale on the water rings. Not sure what the next one is for next week, the tool of the week yet. Um, let's see. And we are having our, hmm, not independence day sale, not for the July day sale. I think this year we called it a happy paradigm shift sale because we are in the very we're we're right in it right now you guys and it is beautiful and talking to a lot of people who it's just it's so refreshing because so many people are in this new energy and they are seeing it and feeling it and they are excited because everything's starting to work out everything is starting to work out for people and it's beautiful and people are noticing. So if you're still having a hard time and the world's not working out for you, surrender some more. I tell you, surrendering to the soul, surrendering to the flow is amazing. You are going to slip right through it and you're going to come out on the other side and it's going to be beautiful. So if you're still fighting things, let them go. <sighs> And that's what the tools will help to do, especially these new fields. So anyway, I will let you guys go. Thank you for being here today. Um, I appreciate that you brought questions and, and yourselves. And thank you for sharing. So anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful world, you guys. It really is. Um, it's keeping your heart. Let everything flow. Because if the world is not beautiful, then things still need to move and shift. And things won't move and shift if you're holding them tight. So let go of everything so that things can move and shift so that you can step into this beautiful new flow. All right. Much love, you guys.